Alright, hello everyone, it is Nigel here once again, and welcome back to the lab room. So, oh, uh, can you believe that we are at 29 episodes already of Nigel Dixie's Tales from the Lab room. That is insane to think about. So, uh, if you've been here since day or night one, or uh, this is your first time in viewing, I want to say thank you, I love and appreciate all of you. And uh, let's get into it. A uh, couple announcements, but I'll, I'll make them at the end. But uh, let's get into this first poem. This first one is called. This first poem. I'm sorry. It's called a poem for the broken hearts. I believe I may have read this one already, but yeah, that's what we read. Uh, your heart may have made him broken today, yesterday, tomorrow. Broken hearts sleep. Broken hearts sleep. Broken, broken lives. The life is fixed when the heart is mended. So, how many of you have had your heart broken? assume you raise your hand, but uh, heartbreak sucks. Heartbreak definitely sucks. It's one of the worst things you can go through, and so many things can cause a broken heart, whether it's uh, something that happened in your life, something that happened uh, in a relationship, something that happened, uh, sometimes something that happened to somebody else, but heartbreak sucks. But, but uh, hey, uh, once you uh, get past your heartbreak and are able to recover from it, trust me, your life will be much better off. Now, I know that's easier said than done, and some things never really go away okay, uh, in terms of, like, heartbreak, especially stuff that really gets you uh, and really hurts your heart strings and everything. Uh, you can actually die from a broken heart, or, which I kind of knew about, but I actually learned how uh, later on. Um, I actually learned how uh, not too long ago uh, is because it puts so much stress on your heart where it like, over pumps and several strands of the heart are broken but uh, yeah, yeah heartbreak it is there but uh, getting past it, it you will feel so much better I promise you but uh, this next one is called Dove the dove flies around the sky not worried about things about war or not worried about things about war for it's for it is peace and it knows peace so the dove is a bird that is that symbolizes peace uh when people think the dove they usually think of peace probably because uh it's white it's like uh, kind of, uh some people see it as like frail and everything but the dove is seen as a sign of peace so when the dove flies around you can tell that peace is there and uh, essentially, this poem talks about the meaning of the dove. Uh, it's not worried about things like war because it represents peace, so peace is there. Uh, and this last one is called Men, and this is by L. Rene. Hey, that's how it was listed on the uh, Poetry Foundation website. Uh, check, check them out. Uh, there's a lot of great poems on there. But <clears throat> My mama had the gift of hand sewing. One perfect stitch after another perfect stitch, eyeballing the precise length of the thread needed to repair what had ripped a gaping hole. Unmaking the whole swath of cotton polyester fabric, she draped across her delicate bony shoulders before a night out with my father, painting the town red. She sat she sat of those early dates when he handed her his fat quarters, hoping they would be enough to make something beautiful, like the outfit she sewed. Had clothes, sorry, let me pronounce that. With matching vests, paisley dresses, fringed halters. She tells me this while I watch the needle bully a ruby rivulet from her thumb, sullying the myth of cotton without the blood. Where she, when she tries to mend my middle school uniform skirt, a navy pleat I never noticed had been stretched into splitting. So, well, this one's interesting, and uh, I think. A, a lot of these I probably won't know too much of the meaning behind, but I may have like a general idea. And I think the idea about this is essentially one generation to another. So, so uh, we see uh, uh, El Renee's mom uh, sewing the uh, sewing the dresses as she's going out with her dad, like before uh, El Renee was born. And then now, oh, it cuts to later on as she's sewing uh, her middle school skirt. So, essentially passing on the knowledge of sewing from one generation to the other. Pretty much put, putting uh, the knowledge into the future generation, making sure that they have the knowledge of sewing. And, uh, so they have, as a skill.
joke later on down the line, but I think that's what I'm getting from it, at least here. And uh, we see the imagery, which I absolutely love, and we see how uh, it transitions from the dates with uh, El Renee's father, or now to uh, El Renee as a child, having her, her dress sewn, which uh, sometimes my mom had to sew my clothes when I actually told them, which was a lot. Unfortunately, hate the perks of being reckless sometimes in my case. But uh, yeah, so I, that's pretty much what I'm getting from here. And the mend, and is mending the clothes together. But it may have a deeper meaning, perhaps. Perhaps the mend is like a relationship. Maybe this is the way of mending the relationship between the mother and the daughter, or from mending the generations together because there is such a difference, uh, perhaps. But I'm not entirely sure. Her, her but that's why I like these albums. They're open ended, and and even if you have the wrong idea, uh, it can be seen how you got to that conclusion. Which is, uh, like I said, why I love these so much. But uh, nevertheless, thank you for watching. Let me, I hope you enjoyed them. Let me comment below your thoughts on these poems and everything, and what you think they mean. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. Um, my higher view of such interest in Ao. Uh, I was about to say Naomi again. Stop saying Naomi. <laughs> Sasha Banks versus Bailey at NXT Takeover.